So the Pope's Exorcist, the movie about the Pope's personal exorcist, kind of, but not really. I decided to take time out of my busy schedule at the Cannes Film Festival in the beautiful south of France to watch this movie. And while the church is upset with the extreme liberties taken within this movie, they should really just be happy with anything that might up enrollment by making the priesthood seem like the Da Vinci Code. As expected, if you couldn't tell by my tone, this movie's dumb as hell. And it's not even like a dumb as hell that gets so fun all the time. There's only a couple moments that are so dumb that you're like, okay, this is now venturing into unintended art. It just needs to steer more into that or just make a good movie. Because overall, this just feels extremely boring and unoriginal, just so jarring between between religious lore and cookie cutter haunted house. If you enter this movie thinking of it as a comedy, you might end up enjoying it a lot more, but it's also just way too bland to be worth that. It's like they had a checklist of every exorcism movie trope, and instead of doing anything interesting with it, they just followed it to a T. And the best part is that they will try to convince you that this is more real than it actually is. Father Amort really was an exorcist for the Vatican, wrote a bunch of books about it, but this really has nothing to do with any of those stories. Guess you don't get paid much for literally vanquishing evil, so you gotta get those book deals on the rise. What a terrible world we live in. And for all of its inaccuracies, apparently the more laid back, at times goofy and joke quipping persona that, you know, Crow brings to the role is actually pretty on par with Amort. And while he was exceedingly open to directing individuals to medical attention where it was needed, he did have some pretty um, interesting views. Like he thought yoga was satanic because of its association with Hinduism and was firmly on the Harry Potter is the devil train, once calling him the king of darkness. Like, I guess you can only be so chill as a member of the Catholic Church pushing 80. The most this movie ends up doing is taking like inspiration from actual stories from within like the Vatican history, then takes some of Amort's personal beliefs and just blows them up to ridiculous levels of pure BS. And not just any BS, Americanized nonsensical horror BS. Yeah, we're in Europe with an Italian priest and they find a way to shove an American family in here. Amy? We're not in America anymore. You can't dress like that. Wow, if only she had had something that transcends style worldwide. A pair of 100% water and snowproof shoes that perfectly combine performance and appearance. Like today's sponsor, Vessi. So with the weather getting better, I've been trying to get better. And that means actually getting my butt out of this apartment for fresh air and exercise. But we're still dealing with all that sporadic weather. I swear yesterday it went from beautifully sunny to snowing to rain in minutes. So going outside can be a bit of a wild card in terms of footwear because no one wants to run outside or canter at a slow pace because they have asthma with wet feet. But thanks to Vessi, I'm covered. I just pop on my everyday moves and go. There's a lot of different trails here that go around water. Some of it's paved, some of it's not. So it's nice not to have to worry. And even on pavement, those shoes are just so lightweight and comfortable. Normally you have to pick between all these different features, but with Vessi, you really do get everything. And right now is the best time to buy a pair of Vessis for yourself by taking advantage of their Memorial Day sale. Just head on over to Vessi.com slash Amanda Jedi or click the link in the description down below to check out a variety of different pairs for up to 30% off. But if you miss the sale, you can still use code Amanda Jedi at checkout for 15% off. All right, so before sliding into the plot, I really just need to talk about my favorite thing, which is the fact that Russell Crowe is playing Father Amort, who is an Italian priest. So he's largely speaking Italian in this movie and actually gets annoyed when he has to speak English. No, 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 no. In English, Father Amort. So I thought that was like an interesting choice to go with Russell Crowe, but um, honestly, he is actually a real highlight performance here. I guess I don't know what it would sound like authentically if you were Italian speaking English, but but, uh, you know, to my dumb ears, like, it was pretty good. And even if it didn't sound good, he is still just giving her in comparison to everyone else's just trash. <laughs> <laughs> like, this other priest, Tomas, is pretty good, but uh, the, the American family, uh, not, not so much. But the movie starts with a quote from the main man himself. When we jeer at the devil and tell ourselves that he does not exist, that is when he is happiest. I don't know, man. I feel like jeering at the devil is pretty badass, but what do I know? And then we are just kicking things off with an exorcism. I am legion. And I have to immediately question why this demon is speaking English when there is no one in this scene whose primary language is English. It honestly feels like this movie had to have a certain amount of like English dialogue in it because of who is making it. So they just came up with stupid times to have characters that shouldn't be speaking English speaking English. Apparently speaking English is a sign of the possession, but Amort is skeptical. And while Amort will 
later claimed that this wasn't a real exorcism, which is why he didn't ask for permission to do it. It seems pretty fucking legit. He banished a spirit to a pig and then killed it. The boy was maladjusted, a temporary mental illness. I use uh, primitive psychology. I'm pretty sure the end implication is that Amort was putting on a show to bait out a mental delusion so this guy would send the demon to the pig, which they could then sacrifice. Are you telling me he killed the pig for theatrics? Like, I guess that actually seems pretty legit as to what exorcisms have been forever, I guess. Well, let's move on. Later, the big boy demon's gonna mention him getting a demon to jump into a pig, so like, it was real? I'm not so stupid. You got Vince to get into a pig. And I can see why the modern sensibilities of 1980s when this was set would have issues with animal sacrifice, but Father Mort will not be stopped when the devil's afoot. Which gets him in shit with all these other high-ranking priests and whatever at the Vatican who are all speaking English for some reason. This is a formal hearing. Proceedings will be undertaken in English. Well, that's a convenient way to keep them speaking English in the Vatican. But yeah, this douche, it definitely seems like they're gonna be implying that he's been infiltrated by Satan to some degree, which is why he's discrediting the very important ex exorcist work and talking about dated possession beliefs. And like, yeah, I, I get to agree with the man, but I'm also not a Vatican cardinal, so kind of weird vibes for the scenario. Like the devil's kind of the entire other half of your stick, my guy. I know that the real Father Amor at some point had said that the Vatican had been infiltrated by Satan with those within it not believing properly, and this just kind of feels like a weird nod to that so that we can have an adversary rooting for evil. Though they do make sure to have Crowman acknowledge that some people calling for an exorcism or actually just dealing with mental health issues and just need some persuasion. But my guy, you just killed a pig. That is clearly more than persuasion. I gotta tell you, if you legitimately thought that that person was just mentally ill, playing into that delusion by sacrificing a pig, probably not the best way to deal with things. But we also get some zingers here where he's like, hey, you can't fire me. Talk to my boss, the Pope. If you have a problem with me, you talk to my boss. So he lives to exercise another day, but he is on the chopping block and they allude to a girl that died following some church involvement, so we love a dramatic setup. Which is when we cut to our obligatory American family moving to a big, scary, inherited home that's actually a dump, ripping in with the cult. The band, not the phenomenon. When I say this movie is jarring, I mean in every possible way. Thematically, the vibes, culturally. And I just really don't understand why they're here. They've inherited this abbey from the husband's estate following his death and just like, thought it would be a good idea to live in it? This is an ancient ass abbey that needs a ton of renovations and it would clearly cost millions to make it livable and they don't have any money. This abbey is the only thing your dad left us. We don't have an income anymore. But their plan is to fix it up, then sell it when it would make way more sense just to sell it as is instead of having to put in the capital to fix it. And even as a temporary living plan, while it's getting fixed up, it makes no sense for them to be here. The father of your children has died and your solution to this is up uprooting their lives in America around their existing support network and friends to live in a centuries abandoned abbey in Spain. Spain, when you don't seem to speak Spanish. I get that the son saw the dad die brutally in the car accident and hasn't spoken since, but this surely would not be the solution. It's fucking foolish, there's not a damn way around it, and it's clearly because whoever made this bullshit wanted to make a haunted house movie with the classic premise of family moving for new opportunities. This instantly could have been so much cooler if the church had like rediscovered this abbey that they had and decided to start renovating it, and then a bunch of weird possession shit started happening within members of the church. But no, you want to make a boring movie. Whatever, they're here being terrible. Get off of there before you break your neck. Is that a cigarette? And we're immediately in the typical haunted house trope. Knocking in creepy jump scare faces that start innocent as the kid brother messing around, but then start to switch to being more sinister, like whispering basement voices, kid noticing hidden caverns, mom hearing things, which leads to an entire assed explosion. <laughs> Yeah, the construction dudes launch a flare into a hole in the side of the abbey and oopsie, it's a gas deposit. Think they might've tested for that first, but oh well. And clearly that explosion has released some unspoken evil. But honestly, anything that happens from this point on, I will be blaming on the hallucinations as a result of carbon monoxide poisoning. It's like the movie baked in its own excuse for me to call all these people delusional. Yeah, it's always nice when they do that. And for some reason they don't just instantly leave. Like I feel like the cops wouldn't let them stay in a building that runs the risk of just blowing up at any given moment. Also, so why would you want to stay in a place that could blow up with your children? Just sell the Abbey as a historical building and trek your ass back to America. I just can't get past the setup. It makes no sense. But no time to dwell there because bingo, bango, bongo, the son is possessed. You're all going to die. Then he tries to start ripping up his face 
which should be super disturbing, but I'm sorry. After seeing Talk To Me, which you all need to keep on your radar, should be dropping this summer, the Possession movies just aren't hitting. They're all really lame and lazy and boring, and this is amongst the most dull. It really only succeeds when it's being stupid as shit, and it only commits to that about two times. I will say that I appreciate that they actually brought the kid to the hospital when he starts acting weird, because I feel like that is just not something these movies tend to do, but you know, unfortunately, MRIs can't detect demonic possession. Fucking ripoff, am I right? So the doctors just have to assume that it's psychosis as a result of the accident he witnessed. No, that's not possible. He's just a little boy. <laughs> Ma'am, that literally doesn't matter. He could still be suffering from extreme, like, psychotic breaks, but yeah, this one time, this one time, it's demonic possession. Or the effects of a gas leak. You pick. And then they just head right back to this place, which is dumb as shit, because a bunch of bullshit starts happening. We got, like, the lights going out. Creepy basement stuff. Demon child. Which opens into the most hilariously stupid moment of this movie, which is impressive because, again, the movie is very stupid overall. Uh, the kid just starts grabbing at the mom's titties. Henry, stop! You never breastfed me, mommy! What am I watching? It's just so fucking stupid. I really think that they thought this was gonna be a genuinely disturbing moment, but I would have paid good money to be in a theater to watch this. I feel like audiences would have lost their fucking shit in hilarity at this. Also, he ripped hate into his own stomach, which is already totally scarred over, so impressive. Honestly though, imagine your kid not talking for a year following the traumatic death of his father and this being the first stuff that comes out of his mouth. Baby's hungry, you fat cow! What? Just grabbing at your titty? But this situation has gotten serious enough to bring in the Pope's exorcist. There is a case that needs your attention. Yeah, that's right. The big man himself called him in. And yeah, I guess if there's one thing the church is good for, it's being a downer about titties. And apparently they've knowingly had issues with this Abbey before. So like, wh why didn't they just deal with it then or condemn the place when they had the issues the first time? Isn't that like, isn't that your, isn't that your job? Isn't that your... Wheelhouse, is it? Is it because it's all bullshit? And like, yes, on multiple levels, it is bullshit, for one. This isn't a real Abbey. None of this happened, which I'm sure you can tell by the asinine plot of having Americans move to a dilapidated Abbey in Spain. Okay, I have to get off that point. Christ. Oh wait, can I, should I say that in this video? Okay. Regardless, the main note left in the records that Father Amor is going through is our sins may seek us out. So I'm guessing that aforementioned failed exorcism is kind of going to come back to bite him in the ass. Aw, look at those scooter montage. So cute. Also, they just have him pounding whiskey at times in this, which apparently not accurate, but I'd love to imagine an exorcist just drunkenly traipsing around the world in his exploits. But upon arrival, Amort realizes fairly quickly that this is very real and serious. Your prayers are worthless here, Gabriel. Oh, we got demon eyes. So this conversation throws Amort off because the demon knows who he is and it kind of just amounts to him saying that he wants Amort's soul. So, you know, pretty standard demon stuff. What is your purpose? I'm here for you. And whoever this demon is, is very powerful. So to even begin exercising it, they need its name, which it obviously isn't handing out. My name is Nightmare. My Nightmare is France winning the World Cup. Just having a blast here equipping with Satan Soldier. Until he pushes him into a war flashback. Classic. So he's a little shook, especially when the kid starts puking up a cardinal. So at this point, it's very apparent that it's a very serious situation, and for some reason, he still doesn't have the mom and the daughter leave. My mother's love is the closest thing we know to God's love. Wow, I think God probably doesn't love a lot of people based on the moms they have, but... Anyway, bitch, why are you listening to headphones when there's demons afoot? Then she goes to investigate the knocking? Like, that's dumb enough in a regular horror scenario, but at this point, you have confirmation that your brother is possessed by a demon, and you're just wandering around letting yourself get jump scared. And not even jump scared by a scary demon, it's a sex pest demon. And you hate yourself for the release you feel. When I fuck you! <laughs> yeah, dude, hardcore. Guess their silly little confessions didn't work out so well. You are a man of God, simple enough, see? Yes. And you are very, very sorry for all of your sins, see? I love that this is played out as a joke, but that's basically all it is. Oh, you diddled kids, 15 Hail Marys and the good Lord will absolve you. And as expected, the priests themselves have some baggage. Amort messed up and this girl jumped to her death when he said she needed mental health assistance. And the other priest seems a little bit more traditional in his transgressions. And how about you, panties? 
Never. Come on! Yeah. Guess he started shacking up with one of the congregate's daughters and lied about planning to quit the priesthood for her. My love for God, it outweighed my love for her. Oh, you sack of shit. If your love for God outweighed your love for her, you never would have slept with her in the first place. This is not about the boy. It has a bigger plan. Uh, yeah, no shit. He, like, literally told you that earlier. Like, he absolutely 100% said he was gunning for your soul. I'm here for you. Either way, he suddenly has a revelation that something he walked by in the garden earlier is likely some kind of entrance, and he very comically uses his little scooter to pull a lid off. You think they might have sealed these evil forces in a bit better, but sure. And instantly, we got crosses flipping upside down on the walls. A classic. Again, why are they still here? I get not wanting to leave your son alone, but at least get your daughter somewhere safe? But no, they're gonna start getting launched into walls, sucked into beds, and choked by ghost hands. Which is comically when we get another explosion. Yeah, the father here just like launches some fire into a gas deposit for reasons. Again, demon aside, multiple areas of gas deposits should be enough to get people out of this place, but the fuck do I know, apparently. Though I must say, I am genuinely impressed by the sheer number of explosions that are in this exorcism movie. It's truly astounding. But we start getting some real deep lore stuff here, not really. Uh, we get the seal of the Spanish Inquisition, the skulls of the people who wouldn't convert lining the walls, the Vatican heaven key symbols, which leads into a catacomb with a bunch of dead dudes and one in a cage, which was apparently for his benefit. He is the final protector, a trap for the demon when an exorcism fails. But I guess that initial explosion just gave it a real clear exit, which is all happening while the Pope is reading about how the grounds of the Abbey are now owned by Satan. So again, you're the church, the big dogs at the Vatican. Why didn't you deal with it properly? It's just like, oh, we didn't like Spain that much. Anyway, guys, Satan wins this one on to another day. Everything is redacted. Why the hell would the religious text about this incident be redacted? Like some kind of CIA mission hidden from the public? Like you'd think you'd want to know how to prevent some unspeakable evil from escaping and like what they tried so you can try new things, but oh well. Pope man's so horrified that he works himself into an episode. But sir, isn't this kind of your wheelhouse? The devil shouldn't get you this worked up, especially when you've managed to live with yourself through the horrible atrocities like covering up child abuse scandals. But a little possession history has you puking up not blood? <laughs> Weak John Paul II, who I don't think they ever specifically named, but it must have been you based on the dates. But big reveal time that is actually pretty lame. The journal that Amor and Thomas find reveals that this exorcist was possessed. And he just happened to be the priest that convinced Queen Isabella to start the Spanish Inquisition. So this movie is literally saying that the Inquisition happened because of demonic possession and not because of someone's shitty beliefs and holier than thou persecution that repeats and attempts to repeat itself generation after generation. Sure. Hey, I'll at least give them props for acknowledging that this was a church cover-up, thus the files being redacted, but fucking stupid. Again, this seems like a massive exaggeration of Amort's personal beliefs that the devil was in the Vatican already. He blamed the devil himself for those child abuse cases, not mentioning the fact that the Pope helped cover them up. I guess that's not the devil, but like priests not believing in Jesus and a variety of other things, but uh, this is literally fabricated lore which is fantastic. Just straight up Da Vinci Code vibes in the most forgettable American style horror. Like Father Amort loved the original Exorcist movie. I don't believe that this would spark joy for him. But at least they figured out the demon's name, Asmodeus or Asmodeus. The king of demons known for lust, which I guess is why they had him like grabbing titties. I, fucking foolish. It also says that he specifically feeds on exorcists, so he wants to use a mort to corrupt the church. You know, the church that was in the process of firing him. Like, then you're gonna get uh, pretty far with that one, champ. But as the demon kind of continues to manipulate them and do weird things and like co-possess the sister, they decide, okay, we're gonna sedate him. Which I have to wonder whether or not that would ever possibly work. Demons seem to override all natural bodily functions, which is why you have them like contorting and weird 
weird directions and just jumping on walls and it seems like they can make the bodies do all sorts of things even if they're dead I think at least in Supernatural the bodies can be 100% dead and then as long as the demon's still in there they're just commanding it like a puppet but yeah somehow it actually works possibly because they spoke his name out loud which weakened him so they managed to tie him up which just leads into more demon shenanigans because even though they've repented Amor and Tomas still feel extreme guilt about the women they've wronged yeah Tomas should feel real fucking bad remember kids the key is to never feel guilt for your wrongdoings Amor definitely comes out cleaner he said this woman needed mental health assistance she jumped to her death and then it turned out she was being abused within Vatican City and the church covered it up likely based on the theory surrounding the disappearance of 15 year old Emanuela Orlandi yeah this whole section is just it's just something else <laughs> Flawless movie here, guys. Big wins. And it just turns into this ridiculous section of hallucinations and demons yelling before it jumps into the daughter. And there she goes, right up on the ceiling. Like demons can make them break the laws of physics and gravity, but sure, a sedative would somehow do the trick. Though I do just love that Amort keeps going back to like, your love as a mother will solve this before. Amy, please, I love you. <laughs> yeah, so much for mother's love. But the situation turns into such a mess that the dumbass actually invites the demon in, which the Pope somehow instantly knows happened. But good job, man. It is always good to give in to the whims of the demon that has, you know, aspirations of world domination. No need to worry, though, guys. He has father or more. He'll fight off this demon like all that whiskey in his blood. It'll just push him right out. Though I feel like the lore of this movie is implying that if, like, the host dies, the demon can't stay inside it because it looks like he tries to hang himself. But, like... I just feel very confident that they can continue meat puppeting you. And then I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but like as it's happening, it's like the asshole cardinal knows it's happening and he starts getting mind fucked. It's like there's some larger connected network because this priest got possessed. It's just really batshit stupid. Like we got Mother Mary rising out of this pool before her face contorts into the girl who jumped off the roof. Tomas is getting attacked by a bloody version of the girl he lied to, who I guess must have killed herself. Good job, fucko. No worries, though. This is all barely an inconvenience. Yeah, that's right. Blood explosion. But yeah, Tomas was just able to get a mort back in control in mere moments. This is a demon that an entire group of high-ranked religious officials and exorcists couldn't handle, and these two schlubs manage fine when one of them isn't an exorcist and one of them is possessed. You learn the Latin. <laughs> and we're right back to the whiskey, but you know, fair time for it though. It's it's so dumb. You know it works in very mysterious ways. <laughs> But now we are just winding on into our conclusion here and we find out that the cardinal that was against him has now left and taken a sabbatical in Guam. I shall pray for Guam. And to do a solid for the Americans, who are obviously headed back to America now that they're all fine and dandy, uh, the church has bought the abbey and uh, reconsecrated it so that they could turn it into this like educational location with all of these like different historical texts. So um, uh, I guess all I'm left wondering is what what about the gas deposits? The those are those are still there. Those are those are still there. Cool. Oh, and they made this really cool guy the new cardinal when the other guy went to Guam. So that's dope. And that is when it's revealed that there are 199 more of these spots where God is not welcome around the world, and Amor and Tomas are gonna track them all down. Let's go to work. Let's go to hell. Oh my God, guys, it's the Exorcist Cinematic Universe. Please no. This thing has been in theaters for like three months. They are pushing for it. And then it all just ends off with a nice little blurb on the remainder of Amort's life. And I also learned that he loved the movie The Exorcist, which I mentioned, and he even let the director record one of his exorcisms. So it's so fun. And then it really makes sure to remind us that he wrote many books and that they're good. Trust me, guys, uh, the books are really good. Like, please read them. We didn't use really any of them for this movie that we want you to find super interesting, but don't worry, his books are actually good. I'm sure the memoirs are quite interesting just to get in the headspace of someone with such strong beliefs, but the movie obviously took its liberties. Maybe someday I'll read some of those, but uh, after doing a little bit of research into this, it did not feel remotely necessary to cover this cinematic 
thing. But yeah, that is gonna do it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Did you enjoy the Pope's Exorcist with Russell Crowe? Do you think they're gonna get some some sequels in the bag? Do we got the Exorcist Cinematic Universe coming in? Cause like, we all need God. But thank you all so much for watching. Thanks again to Vessi for sponsoring the video. And thanks as always to my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video if you're into that kind of thing. All my social medias are listed down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm mostly okay, and we'll catch you all later.